Welcome to our lecture online. Here before us we have a second curl product rule for vectors and we're going to try to show that the rule is correct by doing a simple example. So here we have two vectors and the function f. Now we don't need the function f, that was for the first rule, so let's go ahead and get rid of that, it's not necessary. We just need the two vectors a and b, so we use those two simple vectors a and b. And notice that the curl of the cross product of a and b is equal to that whole expression on the right side. It's kind of complicated. It is b dot del multiplied times a minus a dot del multiplied times b plus a times the divergence of b minus b times the divergence of a. All right, let's see if that's indeed correct using this particular example. Now what we're going to do is we're first going to do the left side and then we'll do each of the four terms on the right side. I don't know if I have enough board space, this may become a two-part problem, we'll see if we can make it fit, but let's start with the left side. First what we need to do is take the cross product of a and b, and luckily we chose simple vectors, that makes it a little bit easier, so a cross b is equal to the x the y and the z unit vectors, the components of a, which is minus y, x, and 0, the components of b, which is 0, y, and 0. You can see that obviously makes it a lot easier to do it like this. This is equal to the x unit vector times minus y times 0, oh, no, nope, oh, I'm sorry, x times 0 minus 0 times y, it's still 0 minus 0, minus the y unit vector times so we have minus y times 0 and 0 times 0, so that's again 0 minus 0. And then we have plus the z unit vector times, here we have minus y times y, which is a minus y squared, minus x times 0, which is minus 0. So we end up with minus y squared 0 for that cross product of a and b. Next, what we want to do is we want to take the curl of that. So the curl of the cross product of a and b is equal to, again we have the unit vectors x, y, and z, now we have the partial derivative with respect to x, the partial derivative with respect to y, and the partial derivative with respect to z, and then here we have the components of the cross product which is 0, 0, and minus y squared, 0, 0, and minus y squared. So that's equal to x unit vector times the partial with respect to y of minus y squared, well that would be minus 2y, minus the partial derivative of z with respect to z of 0, which is 0, minus y unit vector times, now here we have the partial derivative with respect to x of minus y squared, which is 0, and then the partial with respect to z of 0, which is also 0, so 0 minus 0, and then finally plus the z unit vector times the partial derivative with respect to x of 0 and the partial derivative with respect to y of 0, that's again 0 minus 0. So the result is we have just one component right here, minus 2y in the x direction. And notice that is the left side of that equation, which means that the four terms on the right side should add up to minus 2y in the x direction. Well, let's find out if that's indeed the case. So what we're going to do first is we're going to take the the dot product between the b vector and the del operator, and then we're going to multiply that times the a vector. Now notice that this will give you a scalar quantity because it's a dot product, and we're going to multiply the scalar quantity times the a vector. So the b vector is this right here. So in other words, the b vector has the components zero in the x direction, plus y in the y direction, plus 0 in the z direction. So now when we do a dot product, notice we only multiply the x components together, the y components together, and the z components together with the components of the del operator. But we only have one viable component, but at least let me show you what that looks like. So here you can see that the b dotted with the del operator is going to be equal to a 0 in the x direction, plus y in the y direction, plus 0 in the z direction, dotted with the del operator, which is the x unit vector times the partial with respect to x, plus the y unit vector times the partial with respect to uh, y, 
plus the z unit vector times the partial derivative with respect to z. So it's going to be the dot product, which means the x component times the x component, the y times the y, the z times the z. But only one component survives. Am I missing something here? Uh, missing, missing something. The b unit vector is, I'm missing a y. Haha, <laughs> there we go. Plus the y, missing that y there. Okay, now we're ready to do the product. So this is equal to this component times this. So it's going to end up being the partial derivative. It's going to be, oh, not the other way around. So it's going to be y times the partial derivative with respect to y. That's the only surviving component of this. And that is going to be multiplied times the a vector, which is this. So for this first component, let's try that. So here we have the b dot the del operator multiply times the a vector, not the inner vector, but a vector. So this is equal to y times the partial derivative with respect to y multiply times the a vector, which is minus y in the x direction plus x in the y direction like this. So when I multiply this, the partial derivative with respect to y of minus y, which is minus 1, times y, which is minus y, in the x direction. So this is equal to minus y in the x direction. And then if I multiply this times this, the partial derivative with respect to y of x, well, that's 0. And so that will simply be plus 0. So this is just the result of that first term. So let's call this term number 1 and result number 1. So now we need to do the other three terms. So let's go to term number 2. We're going to take the a vector and we're going to take the dot product with the del operator. So this is going to be equal to minus y in the x direction plus x in the y direction plus 0 in the z direction. And we're going to take the dot product with the del operator, which is the x direction times the derivative with respect to x plus y unit vector partial derivative with respect to y plus z unit vector partial derivative with respect to z. And notice that we simply multiply the components together and that means that this is equal to the x components gives me a minus y times a partial derivative with respect to x and then plus x times a partial derivative with respect to y and then the third component is zero because I have a zero z unit vector there. Okay, now we need to multiply that times the b vector, which is right here. So the b vector, multiply times this. a dotted with the del operator, multiply times the b vector, which means that this is equal to minus y times the partial derivative with respect to x, plus x times the partial derivative with respect to y, multiply times the b vector, which is y, y unit vector, like this. And when we do that, this gives us this times this, which is the partial derivative with respect to x of y, which is 0. So we have 0 here, and then this partial derivative with respect to y of y, which is 1. So we get x times y unit vector. So this here is number 2. So that's the result of the second term in that, on the right side of that equation. Next, what we need to do here is we need to get the third term. So we're going to start out by taking the divergence of b and taking that and multiply it and that times a. So starting with the divergence of b. This is equal to x unit vector times the partial with respect to x plus the y unit vector times the partial with respect to y plus the z unit vector times the partial with respect to z. And we're going to take that and multiply it times the b vector, which is 0 in the x direction, plus y in the y direction, plus 0 in the z direction. It's a good idea to write just the whole vector down. So now we're going to multiply. So this, the partial respect to x of 0 is 0. The partial derivative with respect to y is, uh, with respect to y of y, that would be 1. And then this would be 0. So the whole thing is simply equal to 1. All right. So now we multiply that times the a vector. So the a vector multiplied times the, um, I, 
I guess I don't have to be parentheses. I'll write it exactly the same way we have it over there. So multiply that times the divergence of B. Okay, so this would be equal to the A vector, which is minus Y in the X direction, plus X in the Y direction. And we hold the whole thing multiplied times 1, which is simply minus Y in the X direction, plus X in the Y direction. So there we go. That's the result for term number 3. That's this one right here. Okay, remember, the whole thing has to add up to this right here. Let's find out if we did that correctly. One more. First, we start with the divergence of A. The divergence of A is equal to x times the partial derivative with respect to x plus y times the partial derivative with respect to y plus the z unit vector times the partial derivative with respect to z multiplied times the a vector. Now the a vector is minus y in the x direction plus x in the y direction plus 0 in the z direction. So when we multiply, we get the partial with respect to x of minus y, which is 0, the partial derivative with respect to y of x, which is 0, and the partial derivative with respect to z of this is equal to 0. So this adds up to 0. And then, of course, if we're going to multiply the times the v vector, we get 0 as well. So we end up with b times the gradient, not the gradient, but the divergence of a, that's equal to the b vector, which is y times y unit vector, multiplied times 0, which is simply 0. And that is result number 4. So now we have result number 1, we have result number 2, we have result number 3, and we have result number 4. When we add those together, they better add up to minus 2y in the x direction. So, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 equals. The result of number 1 is minus y in the x direction. Now we have to subtract from that, so let's see here. So this is 1 minus 2 plus 3 minus 4. Make sure you get the signs correct. So this is the first term minus the second term. The second term is right here, which is x in the y direction, plus the third term, which is minus y in the x direction plus x in the y direction. And then the fourth term would be minus 0. Okay. What does that add up to? We have a minus y in the x direction, minus y in the x direction, that's 2, a minus x and a plus x. So these cancel out, and those are added together. So this is equal to minus 1y, minus 1y. This is minus 2y in the x direction. And notice that that's exactly the same that I have over here. This is the result of the left side, and this is the result of the right side, so it looks like, at least in this case, with using those two vectors, that the curl of A cross B is equal to B dotted with the del operator times A minus A dotted with the del operator times B plus A times the divergence of B minus B times the divergence of A. It looks like that is a good rule to use for the curl product rule for vectors. And notice that why would you want to use this? Well, sometimes the left side is much more difficult to execute than the right side, so you can go ahead and take care of the right side and substitute that in for the left side in case you want to use that. And that is how it's done. Seems like the left side is a whole lot easier. <laughs> in this particular case, the left side is indeed easier, yes. <laughs> well, it's interesting to show that the left side does equal the right side. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>